We start here. It's 2010, Qatar, a nation on the Persian Gulf, made headlines when it was selected to host the 2022 FIFA World Cup. World Cup is Qatar. At the time, there was a lot of controversy in that decision. There still is a lot of controversy in that decision. Hosting a World Cup is a big deal. It's the biggest football tournament in the whole world. What I always found interesting is the unique storylines that come out of every World Cup in different countries. Qatar will write its own story too, but there's also a story that a lot of people won't know about. Beyond the fanfare of the beautiful game's biggest tournament, Qatar's story is also about the beginning of a modern transportation system. It's not big or loud or always talked about. It's sleek, elegant, and sustainable. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how the World Cup became the perfect opportunity for Qatar to quickly build its modern transit system. Qatar's situation is unique and different from other countries that have hosted the World Cup. At around 11,500 kilometers, it is the smallest country that has ever been awarded to host the FIFA World Cup. For comparison, the next smallest country was Switzerland, and they hosted the World Cup back in 1954. In fact, Qatar is approximately three times smaller than Switzerland. When Switzerland hosted the tournament, it hosted a total of 16 teams. Qatar, on the other hand, will need to host 32 teams. What I find interesting is how many people and events will be concentrated in one small area. As you can see, the largest distance between stadiums is about 55 kilometers. And the majority of the stadiums are in the Doha metropolitan area. This area, which includes the capital of Qatar, has approximately 2 million people. And if current growth continues, in the next 30 years, 4.5 million people are expected to be living in Qatar the majority of them in this area. You would think then that they would have some time to plan out the infrastructure for future growth. That would normally be true, but the World Cup changes this because it's expected that about 1.2 million people will enter the country to take part in the festivities of the beautiful game. So instead of, okay, we have about 30 years to plan this out, it becomes, we actually need to figure a lot of this out right now. Realizing that situation, Qatar took this as an opportunity to commit to building a world-class transit system that would connect this whole area. And that was in 2009 when the decision was made. But how do you even start to build something like this? And usually the first question you have to ask is where do people wanna go? And obviously in this case, people wanna go to the main city areas and the stadiums. And the best way to move people around efficiently, at least in a sustainable way, is through transit. I mentioned sustainability because it's really important to Qatar and something they wanna focus on. It's mentioned in the 2050 Transportation Master Plan Executive Summary 85 times. But let's back up. A World Cup is a different situation. It's only the biggest tournament of the most popular sport in the world. So a lot of people will be arriving into the country in a short amount of time, and that'll be through air. Now, most of you may know about Qatar when it comes to air travel through Qatar Airways. But for this video subject, What's more important to know is that there's actually only one international airport in the country. Yep, that's right. A lot of people will be coming through Hamad International Airport. In some ways it can be advantageous to have one airport because it then becomes easier to predict the movement of people. Here's a map of Qatar and here's where the airport is located. And then once people arrive, then you can start thinking about how people will get to the location they need to go. Starting construction in 2013 and entering operation in 2019, the new Doha Metro runs three separate lines with 37 metro stations in total. The red line connects the airport to the two other lines, and the three lines then reach out to the rest of Doha. You can already see the World Cup stadiums are connected and easily accessed by the metro system. Doha metro trains can operate at 100 kilometers per hour. Operation is automated and does not require a train driver or onboard staff, which makes it one of the fastest driverless trains in the world. But just as impressive is the look and feel of being in one. The rail cars are sleek and comfortable. Although I'm not too crazy about the pattern design on the seats and separators, the overall experience is that of comfort and smoothness. You can view the vast landscapes and horizons while being shielded from the hot weather. Even though Qatar may be a nation with the smallest geographical area to ever host the World Cup, I'm in no means downplaying the effort it takes to modernize the transportation system even if it's done within a smaller area. It still has to take a lot to make major upgrades, especially if it's gonna be done in a short amount of time. For example, the construction of the Doha Metro set a Guinness World Record for having the largest number of tunnel boring machines to be operating simultaneously on a single project. What they built is very impressive. I'm continuously in awe with how tasteful the design of the metro stations are. It has an elegant simplicity, the noticeable streams of color that subtly contrast against the main color theme. Directional and information signs are well-organized, 
not overused or cluttered. The Florida roof windows give an open and bright feel while the light pattern shading tempers any harsh and intense sunlight. You even get a showcase of art every now and then. And with all this investment into a new transportation system, what is most important is that it remains effective for the people who continue to live there for many years to come. You don't want money to go to waste like the Olympics in Brazil, where many low-income residents were displaced to make space for a one-time use event center. And that's really the big question. In order for Doha Metro to be used for many generations to come, it needs to be sustainably well-designed, and the World Cup will be its first big test. It's also important to not just look at the transportation network in isolation. There are also non-transportation related issues that need to be resolved for everything to work well. We're just months away from the tournament, and there's already news that there is a shortage of housing and hotels for all the tourists who will be coming in to watch the tournament. A lot is standing on how the event will go, and the whole world will be watching how Qatar, the first Arab nation to host the World Cup, will do. Qatar itself is hoping to take advantage of the popularity of the World Cup and its new transportation infrastructure to establish itself as a powerhouse to the Arab world. With that, let me know what you think about the topics discussed in the comments section and also who you plan on rooting for in this World Cup. It's no secret which one I'll be rooting for.